Thank you, everybody, again, for, for coming uh, this morning. And uh, I'm going to share some uh, information with you, which is very, very important. Uh, it's going to open the eyes of some, and some of us already know this here, but uh, it's going to open some of your eyes if you've never, ever uh, known what's really going on in this world. What are we, uh, what are we doing in this world? Who made us? Uh, what, is, uh, what were we made for? And can we know uh, and escape what we're going to find out this, uh, this evening? So I've put a presentation together, and hopefully this clicker is going to work. It's called Exposing the Works of Darkness. And it comes from, believe it or not, exposing the works of darkness is what God wants us to do. Christians are called to expose the works of darkness. God tells us, take no part to the Christian person, to the one that loves Jesus. He says, take no part in unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. That means show where the devil is. Because we Christians, we love everybody. We don't just love um, uh, you know, only Christians. We love everybody. Whether you're a Muslim, Sikh, Hindu, doesn't matter what, what, what background you come from, we love you, we love each other, because we are all related to one another. And so God tells us, expose the works of darkness, for it is shameful even to speak of the things that they do in secret. And today, believe it or not, I'm going to talk about the secret societies and what they're up to behind, uh, behind our back. Um, but when anything is exposed by the light, and Jesus is the light, God is the light, when anything is exposed by the light, it becomes visible. So tonight, I'm hoping that even those who are watching on, uh, on, um, on, on, uh, on their computers or uh, on their laptops uh, or on a, on a DVD, I'm hoping tonight that all these things will become visible. You'll be able to see clearly. We've prayed that God will open the eyes of uh, those who can't see tonight. For anything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Awake, O sleeper, and arise from the dead, and Christ will shine upon you. That's from Ephesians chapter 11. So we're just going to go through a few slides. The Illuminati... Um, they are known be better for as the bearers of light. Hold on a second, we just said that light exposes the darkness. How can they be the bearers of light? I'm saying tonight that the Illuminati is a secret society that is under the influence and power of Satan. And I'm going to prove it tonight um, through these uh, various um, um, screenshots that I've got on the, this PowerPoint. So they think that they are bearers of light. They call themselves the bearers of light. Illumin they are illuminated. They are uh, enlightened. They have a power which directs them. But I'm going to show you tonight, it's not light at all. It's actually darkness. Where did it all begin? Well, it all began in Genesis. You know, um, we're told even... Um, not just in the Bible, but I think the, the Quran even says that the Injil is the word of God, that we should read the Bible, we should read what uh, Jesus has, uh, or God has spoken to us. And in the Bible, it gives us a very, very clear account that God made Adam and he made Eve, and God was their protector and their carer. And so in the garden, there was creation brought a perfect order and true love. Creation brought a perfect order and true love, real love. But when we get to reading Genesis chapter 3, something happened in the garden with, the, with Adam and Eve that brought disorder and a distortion of love. And that's what we're going to look at today. What is light? What is darkness? What is real love? And what is fake love? There is a little uh, Illuminati picture, but we'll look, look at, we'll look at that in more detail in a second. So let's move on. It is also mentioned in the Bible as uh, the mystery of iniquity. Mystery meaning the hidden power or the hidden things behind iniquity. What does iniquity mean? Well, iniquity is a, just a, a, a word uh, that's used in the olden days, but it means basically unrighteousness or sinfulness or to break the law, to break the law. Now, we're talking about God's law. We're breaking God's law. Breaking God's heart. Breaking God's law is breaking God's heart. You know when um, 
when we have our own children and they are there, when they're listening to us, it's, it's going so wonderful. But when they choose to rebel against you and they don't do what you're telling, telling you to do, that hurts us. And of course, the, 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 the way we want to bring up our children, we set boundaries, don't we? We set boundaries, we set laws in our home so that our children will be safe and they can learn. But in the same way, God's laws were there in the Bible, even the Ten Commandments, the Ten Commandments were there so that we would not trip up. But in the garden, there was um, already, Adam was perfect. Adam didn't need God to tell him what to do. God, Adam already had God's spirit in him. So, iniquity is a violation, sorry, uh, an I violation of the law. It's breaking the law. It's, it comes from the root meaning of lawlessness, wickedness, without law, transgressors, unlawful. And the first lawbreaker was not Adam. The first lawbreaker was indeed Satan. Satan was the first lawbreaker. It is because of him that we are in this mess, that we're in this mess, uh, this world, this, uh, the mess that we're in in this world. Here's God's order. God should be at the top. And if God is at the top, he teaches mankind how to live, how to love, how to, how to behave, how to love, how to keep this relationship with him. And then, of course, uh, this, drifts off, dr this, this is passed on into the family and into the church. And then the church, will, if, if the church is walking with God, if the family is walking with God, the church will walking with God, it will affect society. We will be able to tell people about this wonderful God. And then, of course, as society uh, expands, those people get into government, power, kings, queens, uh, politicians, and everything's peaceful. That's what God's order is really supposed to be. To, uh, that's the ideal order. It's God's order. But I'm going to show you tonight that there is a new order. There is a new order. There's a new satanic world order. And I'm not just making this up, you know. And some people think, oh, sh they say, VJ, just shut up, man. Because, you know, you, you, maybe you're going a bit overboard with this. You, 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 you know, you're, go you're going a bit too far with, you know, these conspiracy theories. And you need to just maybe calm down. But look, I'm going to present the facts to you tonight. And I want you to see whether this is true or whether it's fake. And I'm asking you, even you watching on the, on, on the camera, uh, if you're watching, I want you to check out what I'm saying. If you don't, then your ignorance could send you to hell. Your ignorance tonight, my friends. And it's out of love we've called you here. We're not trying to convert anybody. Our job is not to convert anybody. Our job is to preach to you the truth. And so that you'll be made free. You'll be set free. So there is a new satanic world order. Right there on the back of the American dollar bill, I thank God for the late Barry Smith, because even Paul will say to you tonight, Barry Smith and Tiki, and I'm sure, yeah, Mick, all of us have been affected by Barry Smith. Barry Smith was the first one who opened my eyes to all this that's going on. Did you know on the back of an American dollar bill that we have... Uh, so many satanic symbols and America I, I believe is, is, is key in the last days to bring forth the Antichrist um, here we have the eye of Horus um, an illuminated eye an illuminated uh, um, uh, eye of, uh, of Lucifer of Satan and a 13 step pyramid there 13 layers, 13 layers of brick even in witchcraft, if you ask any Satanist or ask any witch, they will tell you that the number 13 is a very powerful demonic number. So we have there um, this pyramid. Pyramid is normally associated to Egypt, but uh, 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 known as uh, 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 the world, identified as the world. So he's trying to say, I am the king that sits on top of the world. I am, I am, the, I am really the world leader. I am your leader. Um, and this annuit conceptus nuvo ordo seclorum, it means a, literally a secular, which means a worldly new world order. A secular, that's without God, 
a, a, an order without God. That's what it says on the back of the American dollar bill. When was it put there? It was put there in, it was put there in 1932, but it was actually um, created by the Illuminati in 1776. And then on this side, we're taught, we see this, uh, this American eagle, but from what I find out is that, believe it or not, it's uh, uh, d designed to be a phoenix and not an eagle. And that's what the Freemasons tell us. That's what the uh, Illuminati people tell us. It's not an eagle. You know, they know better. They're the ones that put it there. They're saying it actually represents a phoenix. A phoenix is a fiery bird that comes out the ashes. It represents Satan. Satan coming out from the flames and rising up. So, uh, what else can we say on there? Well, there's 13 uh, arrows, 13 uh, berries, thir sorry, 13 arrows, 13 berries. Uh, all, these, all this is um, demonic. Of course, it does say, in God we trust. And the Pilgrim Fathers put that there because uh, some of the Christians, the brethren went across and started preaching the gospel. So that bit is put in there by the, by the, uh, the, by the forefathers, the, 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 the brethren, uh, the, the pilgrims that got over to America. But you can see that that is still, since 1932, that is still, still remains on the, on the back of an American dollar bill. Guess what's on the front of the dollar, the dollar bill? It's a picture of the man who actually brought forth the uh, uh, pushed forward the Illuminati agenda, uh, Adam Weisenhoff. Right, and I'm just going to show you in a bit more detail. Uh, see if we can just skip that. We'll just go on to this one here. Uh, there you are. That's without all the markings on it. So you can see clearly announcing the conception or the birth of the new secular world order. Okay, secular order. That's what they want to do. Move on. It is witchcraft, by the way. Um, Lucifer there had one eye, and most of the pop artists and some of the movie stars today, they want to tell us, they want to show us that, guess what? We're following Lucifer. Come and join us. We're having a great time. We're rich. We've got lots of money. We're famous. We've made a pact with the devil. If you want a quick, easy life here, come and join us. That's what they're doing. Have a look at some of these artists. They're showing you the one eye. That's what they're trying to show you. It's the eye of Horus. They're saying, guess what? We're in that pyramid. We're in, we're in that little house with, uh, of Satan underneath that pyramid. We're in there. And that's, our, that's where we're comfortable. Uh, you, and if, I'll tell you what. This, you know, if, if you, Hopefully when you're watching your TV or when you're watching your um, um, music videos or whatever you're watching now, uh, movies, you'll be able to see if any of your, your great... Uh, gods that you follow are producing, uh, you know, that kind of one eye um, thing. And some of the artists are blatantly, and we'll have a look in the next session uh, after 12 o'clock, some of the artists are blatantly now telling the world, we're following Satan, and we'll watch a little video clip to show you that later. Okay, we can't do that now because we've got some young people here, and I don't want to expose them, that, expose them to Satan. Okay, so we see here's the pyramid. I, one eye, I'm following him. The devil's my God. And come and join us because I left the church and now I think Satan's doing a lot more for me. And come and follow me. So you people who think, you know, you young people who are in church, you know, don't sell your soul to the devil like Beyonce. Beyonce's had it. She's had it. She sold her soul to the devil. How long do you think she's going to last? Not very long. When the flames are turned up by Almighty God for rebelling and being uh, and, and tricking people into perverse, sexual, filthy, sinful acts. That's what they're doing. Okay. And there's some there's some others. Look at this. This lady's supposed to be sixty something, but she uh, thinks she's going to live forever. She won't be looking like that in another ten years' time. Madonna. Um, and so. These are all Satanists, guys. They're Satan worshippers. I don't worship Satan, I thank God. Pride was Satan's fall. Pride was Satan's fall. But before we look at that, I just want to give you a bit of history about the Illuminati so that you know where it started from. 
Okay. I want to say, and um, mo most of the research I did on this Illuminati, I do thank God for uh, Amir Safati, a Christian man who uh, is a very godly man, uh, and he exp he, he's done a lot of work on it. So I thank God for Barry Smith and for Amir Safati. It says, back in the second century, Gnosticism began to take off with the idea that, that uh, Satanul, Satan, Satanul, Satanul, was the creator of the celestial world, and he created man and the world we live in. So what happened is Gnosticism started teaching that Satan was the, what created us, <clears throat> And God didn't create us, but Satan did. And so um, the world we live in is designed by Satan. That's what they teach us. That's a lie. And that Jesus failed. Jesus failed. Jesus failed his task by not being able to free man from hell. So Satan's the creator now. Jesus came to try to save us, but failed absolute lie because i know i thank god that i am saved and i know that a lot of brothers and sisters are here are saved you know i was a a very um, filthy dirty sinful man and i thank god the day that i asked god jesus the lord jesus into my life uh, i received the holy spirit when i repented of my sin he, not only did he cleanse me of my uh, cleanse me with his precious blood but he he uh, delivered me uh, from hell and gave me his Holy Spirit. So I know that the work that Jesus did on the cross was su is sufficient. So as a result, we all, they say, should worship Satan. So this was back in the second century, in the f first hundred and so years, you know, a AD. This is what started off, and it's still here today. Um, but it began in the garden, as we heard. Adam and Eve were tricked and deceived. Eve was deceived and tricked by um, Satan himself, Lucifer. And when, they, when she broke God's commandment, when God says, don't eat from that fruit of that tree, God was telling her that for her own protection because she was to have no fellowship with any evil or any, any connection with evil. But they, she, broke the com she broke God's commandment. And as a result, not only woman, but man, uh, man fell. They died spiritually. They had no connection with God anymore. But they had, uh, they knew now, they had a choice of doing good and evil. Uh, because they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And since that time, man has been disconnected from God. We've made all sorts of gods for ourselves. We fashioned gods in. We fashioned gods to suit our sin, to our to suit our lifestyle. But then, even when Jesus comes uh, to save us, to connect us back to God by shedding His precious blood upon that cross, we see that Gnosticism uh, uh, was was kicking off to try to to uh, distort the message of Jesus Christ, to distort the Bible. So we see, uh, moving on, that there was a man called. Um, <clears throat> right. They start. They started um, in in the twelfth century. The Knights Templar, uh, a group of uh, um, knights that were protecting pilgrims to go to the Holy Land, started to um, um, uh, really try to protect those people who were going on a pilgrim to Jerusalem. However, there was a lot of a lot of corruption came in. They uh, started profiting from uh, these people, uh, from the pilgrims, by saying, "Look, give us your, give us your, give us your property, and when you get to Jerusalem, you can have a. Uh, we'll give you a, a, a voucher, and when you present that at Jerusalem, you can reclaim your land." Well, only 60, uh, less than, uh, so 60% of people never made it to Jerusalem. So the Knights Templar were getting very, very rich and uh, started serving the, you know, started loving the money. Uh, they were corrupt, uh, became corrupt and became very satanically influenced. This gave rise to the Gnostic teachings of the Kabbalah, extra biblical knowledge, nothing new under the sun. So they started getting into uh, the Kabbalah, which is a, a Jewish, um, a Jewish um, book 
for those who don't know what the Kabbalah is. Um, a guy, a man called uh, Amshel Moses Boa, was, who was there during the, the 20th century, especially when the Germans were started to um, um, really persecute the Jews. This Jew, uh, uh, this Amshel, uh, Moses Bauer, he was really humiliated by the Germans because they weren't allowed to go near the Germans. The Germans, they would have to, uh, you know, dodge. The, they weren't allowed to walk uh, next to them because the Jews were seen as um, a wretched, uh, as wretched people or people that shouldn't exist. Uh, as we know from the Holocaust, that they eventually started uh, gassing them and um, and burning them in the in, in the gas chambers. So this uh, Amish Moses Boa set up a red shield in his uh, coin shop window. He put a, a, a red shield there. And so the red shield is where we get the word Roth, red shield, Rothschild. And the Rothschilds, uh, what he said, what, what Amish, uh, Amshel said, he said, I'm going to become so successful and I will, be, I will uh, become an elite above these German people. I will show them that I, you know, I'm not going to stay low. So what he did was he set up this shield in his shop window, and they then started calling themselves the Rothschilds. And um, they started to become very clever. They started to um, uh, study and, uh, and uh, so that the people would no longer be able to control them. They thought being intelligent, maybe even being illuminated, would help them to you know, beat the, 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 their persecutors. And a life of riches and power is what the Rothschilds started to create. We find now today that the Rothschilds are still here today. The Rothschilds are still here today. They are in that little pyramid, by the way. Satan's little den. And we're going to show that that's, that is so in the next few um, slides. They had five sons, uh, uh, with Nathan going into the UK, uh, and another one, Maya Rothschild, uh, who was so enlightened, he was, a, he, he was so illuminated, which means he made a pact with the devil, uh, that um, he went, uh, uh, he went and uh, fueled and funded another man called Adam Weisenhoff. And Adam Weisenhoff, uh, then who was a, a Jesuit, Jesuit priest, uh, defected from being a Jesuit priest, and then founded the Illuminati, the order, on the first of May, 1776. So that seal was made, that Eye of Horus, that witchcraft seal on the back of the American dollar bill was put there, uh, was, well, sorry, was actually designed on the 1st of May, 1776. And that's why uh, I think we get a holiday on the every 1st of May, so that we can celebrate their satanic uh, agenda. Did you know that? Uh, with only direct lines keeping the wealth. Okay, so what they decided to doing was they started intermarrying, you know, only marrying cousins and to keep the power, to keep the money there. So when people say, oh, the Jews, Jews are controlling the world. Yes, these guys are Jews, but they're not godly Jews. They are, they are, devil, they are devil's Jews. They are devilish Jews, Jews who, who have, have rejected the Bible, rejected the Old Testament, and, and said, to you, said to Yahweh God, said to the God of Moses, we don't want you, uh, we, want, uh, uh, we want Lucifer. So please don't think that when someone tells you, you know, the Jews are controlling the world, uh, no, the Jews aren't controlling the world. God is in control of the universe. The devil has a short time on the earth, and he can use Jews, he can use anybody, he can use any, any, any person from any nationality. All, you've, all they had to do was bow down to Satan. So, with only... And don't forget, our Saviour himself uh, uh, was a Jew. Uh, he came from the line of Judah. Jesus was a Jew. Um, with only a direct bloodline keeping the wealth. Uh, they disguised their writings... 
Um, they disguised their writings, the Illuminati, Adam Weisenhoff, and one day they lost their um, satanic book, they lost their book of order, and uh, it was found, but they wrote in there, uh, they, they cleverly put in there that if it should ever be found, that this was a Jewish plot. And so even today we have rumors that the Jews are running the world. So now, um, Freemasons started in 1717. Now, the Freemasons started off well. They were just builders. That's all they were. They were building hospitals, even churches. They were successful. They were, they were building, um, you know, just, just men who uh, were, very well, uh, were very wealthy and organized. But they started to uh, ride off the backs of these banned Illuminati organizations. So they must have, you know, stopped getting in touch with uh, um, uh, uh, these uh, people. Uh, who were illuminated, and as a result, all the Freemason lodges around the world in England, they are now Illuminati. They are devil. They are the devil's camps. So I'm warning anybody: uh, uh, don't go into a Freemason lodge because you are putting yourself under a witchcraft curse. You're better to go directly to the Lord Jesus Christ, and you can find him in the Word of God in the Bible. So now, as a result. All Freemason lodges are Illuminati. Uh, their leader, Albert Pike, was a 33-degree Freemason, a grand commander of the Supreme Council. He wrote in his book, okay, on page 321, he said, okay, this is an Illuminati uh, commander, grand commander. He said, Lucifer, the light bearer, strange and mysterious name given to the spirit of darkness. Lucifer, the son of the morning, it is Satan, or he, Lucifer, who bears the light, doubt it not. So we see that Albert Pike had a, a massive agenda to push this forward, really. And we find that the Beatles, uh, uh, we find that uh, many people, many uh, um, pop stars, movie stars, got into the Illuminati, with, got into the bed with Albert Pike. But Albert, Albert Einstein said this, you'll be shocked. Albert Einstein, uh, a Jew, he saw what was going on. And this man was uh, a man who um, was a very, very clever scientist. But he saw what was going on, and this is what he had to say, quote, The minority, the ruling class at present, has the schools, has the schools, has the press, that means the papers, the news, CNN, and by the way, CNN, um, what's the guy's name? Ted Turner? Ted Turner? He's in, the, he's in the Illuminati. So your news is not your news. They're going to push what they want you to hear. Usually the church as well. So Satan can get into the church just because, you know, I go to a, you know, going, you can't just run into any church. If they're not reading from the Bible, if they're not teaching from the Bible, if the man who is teaching from the front is not walking with God or loving God, get out of that church because the chances are that it won't be from God. So they were infiltrating not only the schools, but the, uh, the, the news, the press, but they were uh, infiltra infiltrating the churches as well. And so in today, in the 20th century, Sorry, usually the church is as well under its thumb and this enables it to organize and sway the emotions of the masses and make it tools of them. So what he was saying is, look, I can see the Illuminati at work. I can see the satanic agenda. They are trying to infiltrate the, the world. They're trying to get the schools. And that's why today we've got evolution taught in the schools, my friends. And evolution is a lie. It's from the pits of hell. They are scientists, clever scientists, who have tried to uh, manipulate bones and make us think that we've come from monkeys. But anyway, that's something else. Uh, Piltdown man, fraud. Uh, the Illuminati has formed itself into a cartel of international bankers and industrialists. In the 20th century, these people are very powerful. They own banks. They have the money.
Okay, let's just go back to where we were. Pride was Satan's fall. And this is what it says. This is what God records for us about Satan's fall. Because nobody was there. We weren't there. How you are fallen from heaven, O Daystar. That's Lucifer. Son of the dawn. How you are cut down to the ground. You who laid the nations low. You said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. Above the stars of God, I will set my throne on high. I will sit on the mount of the assembly in the far reaches of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds and I will make my, myself like the most high. That's God. You, God, God's reply to him, but you are brought down to Sheol to the far reaches of the pit. Satan wanted to excel God. He wanted to be bigger than God. But God has brought him down and he will bring him down even further to the lake of fire. So all you who are following the devil, you know, it's time to think about this. It's written in the scriptures and God, is, God cannot lie. Lucifer's time is very short. That's why he's on the uh, rampage. He's trying to get his little puppets and co converts, his little disciples. But, you know, the end, at the end of the day, anybody who follows Satan or receives his mark... Uh, or you know, even pays homage to him. That's that's receiving the mark. Is paying homage to Satan. Your your days are numbered also because you will be in the lake of fire, as it is written in the Word of God in the Book of Revelation. So t you have a chance to repent, because God is merciful. So we see from what we've just heard, Satan is on top of his pyramid, his new satanic order. There. He wants to break the knowledge of the truth. He doesn't want anyone to know who Jesus is. He doesn't want anyone to read the Bible. He doesn't want anyone to get into a, 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 a godly fellowship with other Christians. So if you are here this evening, I thank God. It's by the grace of God you've got here. So, and then if we can break the knowledge of Jesus, we'll have a break of the family home. You'll have divorce, you'll have fighting, you'll have split marriages, you'll have even love that is distorted, a distortion of love. That's what his agenda is. And can you see that we are already, that's already happening in the world that we're living in today? We have also Satan wants to infiltrate the church. So what he brings in is false teachers. He brings in his people into the church. And they're doing some great fancy miracles in the church, by the way. There's some real great signs and wonders going on. But the, my Bible tells me these are false lying signs and wonders. These are lying signs and wonders. It doesn't mean God can't heal. And it doesn't mean that God is, cannot have power to even to raise the dead today. God is present with us. Thank God for God's Holy Spirit. But there are some who have entered the church, false, false teachers. False teachers like Kenneth Copeland, um, Rodney Howard Brown, and many others I could name. And so they are trying to bring a different word. If God's word is light, then any other word is not light at all, but darkness. And so... He wants to create a society that just thinks about themselves. So no longer is society then filled with the knowledge of God and care for one uh, and filled with love for God, but they are only thinking about themselves. How am I going to be successful? Does, it doesn't matter who I need to step on. As long as I'm going to be successful, I can step on anybody I want, even if it's my own brother, my own sister. And then, of course, that filters into the government and that's why we've got a new world order government going on. Am I afraid? Are you afraid? No, we're not afraid. Because you know what? We know the truth. We know that Jesus is on, at the top here, not Satan. We know our Lord Jesus Christ is at the top. And if you put him in your, at the top in your life, if you make Jesus Christ your Lord, not just your Saviour, but if you make him your Lord, if you repent, turn away from your 
from the way that you live, your sinful ways, then God will save you. He will forgive you. Your name will be written in the book of life. And then God tells us, if uh, this, is, this is what Satan's done. Whoops. It says, but if our gospel be hidden, but if the good news of Jesus Christ and the work of salvation that he has obtained for us is hidden, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world, which is Satan, has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest that the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Satan has blinded the world. Satan didn't want you to be here this evening. Satan doesn't want you to watch this video either. He will do anything to bring a distraction in your life. He wants you to stay blind and go to hell with him. But Jesus Christ came that you might be set free. The Tower of Babel. Where does that come from? It comes from God showing us in the book of Genesis chapter 11 that this is nothing new. Uh, the, 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 the New World Order or the Illuminati is nothing new. Back in, back in the time of uh, uh, just after the flood, uh, Nimrod, um, who is known to be a giant, decided to build this great uh, uh, um, empire of a building to show that he could reach the heavens and that he's, he, he was uh, to be worshipped. And he built this Tower of Babel uh, as a rebellious act against God Almighty. And we're talking about the God of the Bible. He did that as a rebellious act against God. And he got all the people, not some of the people, but he got all the people on his side to listen to him and to listen to his satanic agenda. So we see that the Illuminati or the, the, the satanic agenda has been there back from time. I can't remember exactly what kind of time frame that was, uh, but uh, maybe um, I might be able to put it down at the bottom of the slide when I do research it. Okay, so we move on to... Now you might say, well, v, you know, VJ, that was thousands and thousands of years ago. You know, you, why are you bringing that up? Take a look at this building here. The, the building in Strasbourg. There's the Tower of Babel. And look at the building that they have built in Strasbourg as the, as the headquarters of the United Nations. That is a, a, a complete rebellion against God. They are still in rebellion to God. They are still uh, at their own uh, satanic agenda. Psalm 2 um, uh, actually, um, God actually, actually laughs at them. God says, you know, you leaders, you kings who decide that you're going to rebel against me, I laugh at you. Who do you think you are? We're puny little uh, men and women on a tiny planet in a huge universe which we will never be able to explore because it's so, it, it's, it's expanse is so massive. And we think we can tell in God, we are better than you. So that's a direct rebellious, rebellious building saying, what we couldn't finish, almighty God, we will finish and we will show you who we are and we will get the whole world on our side again. And so what they did was they confused, God confused the language at the Tower of Babel because they could cooperate, because they were, had the same mindset and they, they had the same illumination, God came down. Did he kill them? No, he didn't kill them. He, he caused the population there to be dispersed around the world. And that's where we get you know, the different languages from. So no longer was it one language. But... It became many languages. We all speak different languages here, uh, who are sitting here. Um, but they are saying now, guess what, God? You may have confused the languages, but we will have one language again. Many voices, but one language. We will do it. You know, who do you think you are, God? We will have one. And what's the most common language in the world today? 
English is the most common language in the world today. So they are saying to God, we will finish the tower that you decided us to, to stop and we will use our puppets to do it. We will infiltrate the minds, especially of young people. But that doesn't uh, mean he won't get the old. He get, he's after everybody. Moving on. You can find that in Genesis chapter 11 in the Bible. And what I'm going to do here, just show you this video, and then we're going to close here, and we're going to have this. This is only five minutes, so if we can just have a quick look at this, okay? And uh, we'll put it on the, uh, on, on, on the um, camera as well at a later stage. So this is the New World Order. This is, uh, uh, what they, they, this is what they want to do. We have before us the opportunity to forge for ourselves and for future generations a New World Order. A world where the rule of law, not the law of the jungle, governs the conduct of nations. When we are successful, and we will be, we have a real chance at this new world order, an order in which a credible United Nations can use its peacekeeping role to fulfill the promise and vision of the UN's founders. There's a need for a new world order, but it has different characteristics in different parts of, of the world. The affirmative task we have now is, uh, is to actually um, uh, create uh, uh, a new world order. A world in which there is the very real prospect of a new world order. It's about the future of Europe and a new world order. After 1989, President Bush kept said, and it's a phrase that I often use myself, that we needed a new world order. and the hope that each of us has to build a new world order. The pieces are in flux. Soon they will settle again. Before they do, let us reorder this world around us. So that the problem of the Bush presidency will be the emergence of a new international order. Within the next four years, we will see the emergence of a new international the beginning, order. The beginning of a new international order. But today, with Asia already outproducing Europe, India and China are clearly becoming part of our new order. So, in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, a new world is emerging. It is a new world order with significantly different and radically new challenges. I think its task will be to develop an overall strategy for America in this period when really a new world order can be created. It's a great opportunity. It isn't just a crisis. That this crisis, in the way that has developed, will require some kind of a world government. Good evening, everybody. President Obama and British Prime Minister Gordon today calling for a new world order to tackle our global economic crisis. And the president outlined his vision of a new world order in which the U.S. would participate fully. We've got to give them a stake in creating the kind of uh, uh, world order that I think all of us would like to see. So I see uh, a world order in the future with a multipolar uh, world order. I think a new world order is emerging, and with it the foundations of a new and progressive era of international cooperation. We have resolved that from today we will together manage the process of globalization to secure responsibility from all and fairness to all. And one of the ways it will drive the change is through global governance and global agreements. But in a globalized economy, we are going to have to take global responsibilities. And there going to, is going to have to be some semblance of global governance. Never before has a new world order had to be assembled from so many different perceptions or on so global a scale. Nor has any previous order had to combine the attributes of the historic balance of power system with global democratic opinion and the exploding technology of the contemporary period. There also exists an extraordinary opportunity to form for the first time in history a truly global society. Well, during the, during the conflict with Saddam Hussein, which he handled so superbly in, in a short-term sense, but he kept talking about a new world order. 
uh, and, and, and then President Bush, at the end of, the, of that war, promised he would give four graduation addresses, four commencement addresses, describing that new world order and what America's role was going to be in it. It turned out he gave one of those addresses and canceled the other three and talked about something else. That's what, because they weren't ready yet. That in fact, we're all going to have to give up a little bit of our sovereignty in order to make the world work. And I strongly believe India will be a central actor in the new world order. And this present window of opportunity during which a truly peaceful and interdependent world order might be built will not be here for open for too long. Already there are powerful forces at work that threaten to destroy all of our hopes and efforts to erect an enduring structure of global cooperation. Are you optimistic a global system can happen it, from what it, we've heard so far? It, it, it could happen and in fact it's in the works. I mean, but sir, just one thing, we could go on about how, you know, your family committed all these acts against society, but we just want to let you know the New World Order has no legitimacy right, and right. that we as a people are not afraid and we are waking up to the robber barons and the big banksters who are looting right. this economy with the Federal Reserve. Well, we just want to let you know the New World Order has no legitimacy right. and that we as a people are not afraid and we are waking up to the robber barons and the big banksters who are looting right. this economy with the Federal Reserve. Well, that was Rockefeller, I believe. Yeah, he's one of the Illuminati uh, bankers. And what the man was saying, we're not afraid of your agenda. We know what's going on. You're going to try to kill people. And we're going to look at that in depopulation in the second half now. Okay, so we'll have a break now. And I want to thank Paul for filming this. Thank you, Paul.